Hi everybody, it's Monica. And Candace. <laughs> we are Glass Over Tea Kettle, and today we are talking about five dangers of stained glass that we didn't know about when we first started. We're gonna share those tips with you. Let's get started. Hey Candace, nice to see your face again. Hello, it's me. <laughs> your Darth Vader mask is gone. Yes. All right, let's talk about the five dangerous things we didn't know about when we first started stained glass. What's number one? Number one, when you're a stained glass artist, everybody asks, do you get cut by glass a lot? <laughs> the answer yeah. is yes. All the time. So we definitely take precautions to make sure we don't get cut by glass. Um, we have glass gloves that we use when we handle the glass sheets. Not only does it give us a better grip on the sheets, but it also keeps us from getting our hands cut by those razor edges. And when we do get cut, we stock up on band-aids, the waterproof kind, so they stay on when we're grinding. <laughs> I do have to use these a lot. I will admit, I am a safety girl with a lot of other a lot of other processes we're going to talk about, but when it comes to glass handling, I don't always wear my gloves, but I've been better lately. It's all right. I give her the eyes when she's not wearing her gloves. <laughs> she throws gloves at me. <laughs> all right, what else? What else is dangerous though? That's what everyone assumes. Right. So everyone automatically thinks glass cuts dangerous. Yeah. But also the chemicals you use when you're a stained glass artist particularly when you're using them all the time, mm -hmm. uh, that is definitely something you want to protect yourself from. So that's the number one danger that you don't think about are the chemicals. Yeah, the fumes and the liquids and the things. We're going to go into a little more detail, but we didn't know when we first started. The second danger we didn't know that we know a lot more about it now is to have a separate workspace for when you're soldering. Soldering is when it starts to get a little dicey in the process. Sketching, glass cutting, grinding, 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 grinding and foiling. Those don't have a lot of um, corrosive chemicals and heat and things that can really hurt you like soldering does. So when you're soldering, you're literally melting. You're using a very, very hot tool. It's not on right now, don't worry. Um, I just touched that with bare hands. Nice. On a safety video. Hashtag safety. This tip touches lead every day. So I will use one of my de-leading wipes. We use these a lot. Um, keep things around on your soldering station and don't cross contaminate to other parts of your studio. Like de-leading wipes for those moments you're not wearing your gloves. You wanna wear heat proof gloves. Sometimes flux, which is the liquid or gel or paste that we use to adhere the um, molten hot lead to your copper foil. Um, sometimes it seeps through the gloves. So we've started wearing an extra layer of precaution, wearing disposable gloves under our heat proof gloves when we're soldering. We should say, by the way, these are just some things that work for us. Over time, we've expanded our safety. When we first started, we didn't know this stuff. And if you take a class, you'll be fine. A weekend class, you can relax a little bit. But if you start doing this stuff regularly and being exposed to the fumes and the um, chemicals regularly, we recommend some of the stuff. But when we're soldering, the air gets toxic. I just shut that, it was loud. But anyway, um, what do we do to, for the toxic air? So the number three danger that you wanna make sure that you're taking care of is ventilation. Ventilation is key when you are soldering. You wanna have an open window, a fan, and if you have access to it, get a smoke absorber to get rid of that soldering smoke and pull any of the lead particles that you can pull out of the air. Um, and just protect yourself, you know? Lead poisoning is no joke, so you don't wanna be breathing that stuff in if you can avoid it. Hence the Darth Vader mask. Yes. So the respirator is going to be the most effective tool. Certainly safety goggles, keep this stuff out of your eyes and gloves. And when we're done soldering, we use special soap, special wipes to get rid of any traces of lead. Yeah, it's a soap that removes lead. Um, soap and water, regular soap and water doesn't quite cut it. So yeah, get some de-leading soap, some de-leading wipes, and just protect yourself from any sort of lead contamination. 
Yeah, and the ventilation thing, we had no idea. I think back now and I cringe. When we first learned stained glass years before coronavirus, so before the pandemic, there was no mask wearing in this class. So for weeks, we were in this um, room with the windows closed. Eight students were all soldering, fumes everywhere, no masks, no windows open, no fans. And I think back now and I'm like, the, it was really irritating to the skin and the lungs, but I didn't realize why. So when we took this hobby and became full-time artists, we learned a lot more and how dangerous it is to be exposed to that on a regular basis. Yeah, to avoid, to avoid not in void, to avoid yeah. cross-contamination. We even have shoes that we wear in the studio only and we leave them in here when we leave the room. We should mention our studio is attached to our house. So we don't want to walk through the house with the same shoes. So that's one of the reasons too. Um, and we have sweet little baby kitties that we don't want to expose to glass bits or solder, anything like that. So separation, ventilation, those are some things we definitely have learned along the way. And the next thing would be all the finishing chemicals. We didn't know about these when we took our classes and they even say poison. Where? Right on there. This is, for example, one of the finishing chemicals that we use is called patina. It changes the solder seams from silver to either black or copper, depending on the look you for, the look you're going for, like whatever. It. The look you for. The look you for. Um, when you're using these chemicals, wear gloves. We use uh, reusable dish gloves that are just dedicated for all the finishing chemicals. Um, the flux remover, the patina, the polishing wax, when you're handling that piece over and over every day, you're gonna wanna protect your skin and your lungs. So yeah. we wear a mask. Yeah, it might seem like overkill to wear a mask when you're using patina, but it is a causing a chemical reaction. So we just try to protect ourselves as much as possible to avoid any of those preventable injuries. You know, we, we wear goggles, we wear masks, we wear gloves yeah. on pretty much every step except for foiling, so. I will say we have had professional photographers and videographers in our studio before, and there are definitely photos and videos of us without safety gear to get the good photo angle, you know, without the masks or the gloves. It's fewer, fewer examples of that now. And when we first started, we didn't know. We sim simply didn't know. We would grind, even in the classes, no mask. We did wear goggles because bits of glass can get up. But why did we start wearing a mask? Remember your glitter party? <laughs> yes. So I had been grinding for a while and I walked into a bathroom and looked in the mirror and I had so many glass particles in my eyebrows. I looked like I was like going to a woodland fairy party or something. I was covered in glitter. Yeah. Like a twilight vampire. <laughs> and <laughs> we realized we are inhaling that. All these glass particles from our grinder, they form a dust and most stained glass artists know what we're talking about. So wear just a, even just a cloth mask while you're grinding to prevent yourself from breathing this in regularly. Yeah, there is water in the grinder to kind of help cut down on the dust, but there's still dust that gets into the air. So yeah. just protect yourself. Yeah, so the fifth dangerous thing that we didn't know about when we first started our stained glass journey so many years ago. Yep, the most dangerous thing is you will become addicted to stained glass. Stained glass is an incredible incredible art form and as you get into it it is so much fun we love creating stained glass we love the stained glass community so don't let any of these tips deter you from participating in an amazing art form yeah we talk about these dangers but we also talk about how we've learned to reduce our exposure but you guys it is addicting you're gonna buy so much glass you're not even gonna know what to do with it all these beautiful sheets of glass that you can't wait home to get home and break mm -hmm. into what designs that you want. So we highly recommend it. We could talk about this all day. We love talking about stained glass. We so appreciate the comments and questions that have been coming in. Many of you were very patient and waiting for us to start our videos. And if you're new to our channel, just know that there are a lot of teachers and experts out there that might have different or better advice. Take it. We're just two experienced artists that wanted to share some of our tips behind the scenes. So go ahead and like and subscribe and ring the bell and all those YouTube things that will help get our channel out to other stained glass artists or people who are interested in learning or even consumers. If you're buying a piece of stained glass, it's kind of nice to know what goes on behind it. Yeah, it's fun to learn the process. And if you are an artist and you have tips or tricks for keeping yourself mm. safe, 
Put them in the comments. We want to know. We want to find out what other artists are doing, and we love learning new techniques and new things to do. Yep. So thank you so much. We come out with new videos every Wednesday. Once again, I'm Monica. I'm Candice. We are Glass Over Tea Kettle. We'll see you next time. Bye. <laughs> All the way, do it. <laughs> Too many hands. Yes. Okay. Bye. We'll work on that. <laughs> see ya. Bye. <laughs>